All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna do the test three review. Uh, we're gonna do uh, version A uh, today as we go through this one. Uh, so uh, this will have uh, 13 questions on it. The test is going to be on Monday. So Monday you have uh, all day uh, to take the test. Uh, and as a reminder, uh, there is no uh, lecture, no live lecture on Monday. Uh, because that's when we have the test. So we're doing review today and then uh, no live lecture on Monday, but there will, there will be a live lecture on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And that's gonna be the review for the final exam. So we'll just do reviews on those days. And we have two days scheduled because that way we could do both versions of the, uh, the final exam sample. We'll do version A on Tuesday, version B on uh, Wednesday. And as a reminder, you have that final exam review assignment available for you as well. And so that's another great way to uh, review and that's available all the way in, uh, through uh, until like next Thursday is when it's due there. So let's go ahead and get started on this. So uh, there'll be 13 questions on this as it says in the, in the test here. And so the first one that you're gonna uh, see is one where you have to find the, uh, it'd be one where you find an oblique. So in this case, uh, because the, the power on top is higher than the power on the bottom, for the horizontal, uh, there's none uh, here for that particular one. Now for the vertical asymptote, if you wanna find the VA, then what we do is we uh, set the bottom, the bottom equal to zero. Okay, so we're gonna do two X minus three equals zero. And if you solve for that, you're gonna get X equals three halves. So you wanna make sure you have the X equals there uh, as part of your uh, answer. Now we already said that there's no horizontal because, so again, for the HA, you have the rules. And so what we have is an example of rule number three and those rules that I gave you in that section where we talked about rational uh, functions, graphing them. Uh, so in this case, I have my N is greater than M. So no, no HA. Okay, so that's what that means. That's why I have none here because the highest power on top is a two that's your N, the highest power in the bottom is your M, and that's a one. So because of that, we have no HA. So that's rule number three that we're applying here in this case. Now, even though there is no horizontal, uh, it's asking us to find an oblique, and there will be an oblique on this particular one. Now for this, uh, in order to find the equation of the oblique, we have to use long division. Unfortunately, we can't use the synthetic division here, because in order to do synthetic, you'd have to have a one in front of the X and a one on the power of X. So this is one where we're not gonna be able to use synthetic divisions. Instead, we wanna use long division. And this is where we're gonna set it up like this. Uh, we don't have to worry about putting a zero placekeeper in here because it's already descending power. So you set it up uh, like that. So again, this one can only be done by uh, long division. In fact, both of these, 1a and 1b, both of those are, require long division for that. So you're going to take the first thing, 6x squared, and you want to divide it by 2x. The result goes on top here. 6x squared divided by 2x is a 3x. So we'll multiply 3x by both things on the outside, 6x squared minus 9x. And then we're gonna subtract these. So six X squared minus that is nothing. Be careful with when you do this, we're taking negative 17 minus a negative nine. So it's negative 17 plus nine is really what that means. So you're gonna have a negative eight here. Then we bring down the plus five, negative eight divided by negative eight X divided by two X is just gonna be a negative four. So multiply that, we get negative eight X plus 12. And if you subtract it, you get a remainder of negative seven. However, the remainder doesn't matter when you do these problems. It's only the quotient part is what you're gonna put. 
Don't forget to put y equals because it needs to be an equation. So y equals 3x minus 4. And that's going to be the answer for that one. So number one on the test is, is one where you will have to find an oblique asymptote. And it's also one where you will have to use long division. So you want to make sure you know how to use long division for number one, uh, because that's the situation. That's the type of problem that you would see on the actual tests, one where you'll have to use long division instead of uh, synthetic division. Okay, so that's it for number number one. Moving on, number two. So number two uh, is a multi-part question here. Uh, it says, use the following equation to answer the below question. So it's going to ask you for intercepts, asymptotes, and ask you to graph it. So we'll do that for this one. For the for number two on the test, there will not be an oblique asymptote that you have to graph. It's only going to be, it would be an example of rule number one or rule number two with the horizontal asymptotes. So for this one here, uh, for the intercepts, for the x-intercept, what you're going to do is you want to set the top equal to zero. So x minus two equals zero, and we'll get two. Okay, so uh, that's the x-intercept. And then for the y-intercept, you want to put in a zero for x. So zero minus two over zero squared minus two times zero minus three. Like this, if we don't need to extra parenthesis on the end there. And you're gonna get negative two on top on the bottom, negative three, and negatives cancel and you'll get two uh, thirds. So you can follow the instructions on the, the test. Uh, let me go ahead and, and check the instructions. I believe this one, you can just type the, uh, the answers in. Uh, for for that, and you don't need to put them in the coordinate form. So let me just check for you just to make sure on this one. Uh, so just checking this question for you. So this one, yeah, it just says x equals, and you just type them in. You don't have to write these in coordinate form. So it's okay to write these just as is uh, for the intercepts. All right, now for the uh, for this next one, the VA, the vertical, uh, what you want to do is you're going to take the, the bottom and set it equal to zero. I probably should have actually factored this one up front to make sure nothing cancels out. That's actually something you should have done. So nothing cancels on this one, but it's good to always check just to make sure. So on this, you get a minus and a plus here, and nothing, nothing we see cancels out. So x minus two, this is always something you should do first. x minus two, x plus one, x minus three, nothing cancels. So if we set the bottom equal to zero, we have x plus one, x minus three, x plus one, x minus three equals zero. Okay, so. With this, we set both those equal to zero. We're going to get x equals negative one and three. So we have both of these here. Now, when you do this in the test, it's going to ask you for the leftmost vertical asymptote and then the rightmost vertical asymptote. So the, this will be the left one, of course, because negative one is further to the left than three is. So if you just have these in order from smallest to largest, that'll give you the left and the right one that you'll type in. So this one, you do need to make sure you type the equation in for that one. And it'll remind you if you're, if you just try and put negative one in, it'll, you'll get a warning, kind of an error message. It'll say, you know, needs to be an equation, something like that. So you'll see that come up and it'll be a reminder of that one. Uh, for the HA, we have these rules. Now, the one that we have up here, the highest power on top is one and the highest power on the bottom is two. So in this case, I have an example of rule number one where N is less than M. So if that's the case, then automatically your horizontal asymptote is Y equals zero. The other rule that we haven't talked about yet, rule number two, that is where the highest power on top equals the highest power on the bottom. And in that case, you're gonna take the uh, ratio the leading coefficients to get the answer there. For instance, uh, I'll come back to this one. 
this question right here, if you were to multiply this out, you would have x squared on top. And you have x squared and x squared down below. So if you wanted to find the, the HA horizontal asymptote for this one, it would be y equals one over one or one because there's a one in front of this and a one in front of there. So those leading coefficients, you would just divide and get the answer. That would be an example of rule number two. So you can take a look at uh, number 2B and that's gonna tell you that one as well. So you should be familiar with both versions on the test because the, the test question could be either one of these and it'll give you, depends on what my open math gives you on that. So you have to make sure you know how to do both of those. Y equals zero then is gonna be the equation for the horizontal. Now we need to put all this on here in graphs. So I have a negative one and I have a positive, positive three. Okay, those are the two vertical asymptotes. And then in this case, I've got the horizontal one is at zero. We also have intercepts that I'll put on here as well from up above. X intercept is two. And it also crosses at two thirds. Okay, so two thirds is about right there. Yeah, about right there. Okay, so now I have my intercepts and I have the asymptotes that are on there. Now let's take a look at the one in between the two vertical asymptotes. In between the two vertical asymptotes, it can either be uh, one of these four shapes. So a U, upside down U, or ones that look like a cube. Those are the only four things that could go in between the two vertical asymptotes. The only one that actually matches the dots that we have here is going to be this one on the end, the negative cube shape. So because the other one, it's if it's a U shape, it's usually like symmetric. So it's it's not going to be a because because this if we try and do a U there, it's going to be kind of off-centered and oblong, kind of doesn't look exactly like a U. And so that's why that's not going to be that one's not going to be here. And so that's why it can only be really this one. Okay, so that's what the middle shape looks like. It looks like that. So the only thing we have to figure out is what it does on the ends. It, the graph will either be above or below the x axis. To know that, we have to use some test points. So I'm going to test a point that is one to the left of the, the uh, vertical there. So I'm going to do negative two. But I'm also going to test x equals something beyond this one. So I'm going to test four. So that way I can see whether it's above or below in both those places. So I just need to plug this into the original function and use that as a test point. All right, so uh, with that, uh, we'll go ahead and test, put that in the original one. You can either use the factored version of the original, I'll just use the original one here. So y equals negative two minus two over negative two squared minus two times negative two minus three. So just putting that into the original function, we'll get a y value, and that's a point we can plot on here. And that'll tell us where the graph is. Uh, so if we do that, we get negative four on top, and then we get four plus four, eight minus three is five. So negative four fifths, which means we get negative two and negative four fifths. Negative two and negative four fifths will be about right there. So now that tells us that the graph is gonna be below the x-axis there at that point. Now we'll test x equals four. So four minus two over four squared minus two times four minus three. Okay, so this, we're gonna get a, a two on top. The bottom we get 16 minus eight is eight. Eight minus three is five. Okay, so we're gonna get the point four and Two fifths here. Four and two fifths uh, leave out right there. So now it tells us the graph is going to be above the x axis. And so that's what your final graph is going to look like. Uh, this will be a multiple choice again on the test. Uh, so you'll just pick the, the correct one that matches all the information that you have. So uh, multiple choice again on that. 
All right, so next one. Okay, now on number three, the one the way that I have them here in the on the sample is I'm providing a bunch of graphs for you to make it easier for you to actually graph the, the final answer. So the one that you'll be doing is you're going to be using the the graphing tool on that uh, for that particular one. So number three is a is a graphing tool that you'll use. And so uh, for that, we want to know what the so basically you're just graphing the final answer. However, it's better if you kind of do it in stages here. So that way you know what the final graph is. And that's why I'm providing these extra grids here because we're going to do this in steps. All right, so we're going to start with the, the base graph. Now I have a three of the X graph, so you will have to know what the base graph looks like. So I want to do Y equals three to the X. We know that the key points for three of the X, it goes through zero, one, and it goes through one, three. So this is what the, is the base, two points from the base graph that we have. Okay, so next thing we'll do is, uh, I'm gonna take care of the negative. There's a negative sign in front. So I wanna graph negative three to the X. Okay, so I'm ignoring everything else. I'm just doing it step-by-step step until I get to the final graph that's here. Okay, so I have Y equals negative three to the X. Well, that means I need to take my original graph and flip it over the X axis. So both these points are gonna be down below. So it's gonna be here and here. And so then it's gonna go down like this. So that's what the negative does out front. The negative out front flips it over the X axis. If you have a negative in the exponent position, it's a flip over the Y axis. But in this case, negatives on the outside, it's a flip over the X axis. Next thing we'll do is do negative three X plus two. Or, I'm sorry, my minor, there's a minus there, so minus two. Okay, negative three to the X minus two. What this does is it's gonna take the graph and shift it two places to the right. It's the opposite direction of what you see after the X. So if it's a, a minus, we move it to the right. If it's a plus, you move it to the left. So in this case, we wanna move that two places to the right. That means that both of these points are gonna move two places to the right. So I'll have one right here. And this place, this one moves over to three, negative three. That's going to be here. So everything got shifted two places over to the, to the right. The very last thing we'll do is this is the answer that you're going to graph by using the graphing tool. Okay, so now that we got a plus three, which means that everything is going to shift up three units. So both these dots go up three. So this one's going to go up to two, two. This one is gonna go right on the X axis. What also happens is the horizontal asymptote gets changed. All these three that we've done so far, the horizontal asymptote was the X axis, but now it moves up to here. So the graph is gonna follow this, go down there and look like that. And that's what your final answer is going to be. Remember, if you're graphing these in the using the, the tool that's there, okay, the, the tool that you want to use in this case, there's two buttons that you're going to see when you do these on the test. One button is going to be this that'll have two dots and there'll be a dotted line like that. The other button that you're going to see is a dotted line like this, and then you have something like this. So you're gonna see both these buttons when you do these in my open map. You wanna click the one on the left, the left button you want, because see how it has a horizontal asymptote? You don't want a vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote would be used on the log question that we'll do a little bit later. So that's the button you want on that one. But this one, you want the one with the horizontal asymptote. Click that button and then First, you click on the horizontal asymptote. So you click on that, and then you click on these two points that we that we did here, and that's going to lock in your answer. And that's how you would do that one in my open math by using the the tool.
Number four is one where it's, it's either going to be one where you see a multiplication or a division inside. So this is going to be involving some of the exponent rules that we talked about. If it's if you're multiplying two things at the same base, you're going to add the exponents. If you're dividing, you're going to subtract the exponents. So this here, we're going to start by adding the exponents. I want to do 2x plus 2x inside. So the x minus 1 equals 8. So notice that the multiplication turned into addition. Down here, I would have 3 to the 7x minus 4x I would have in that case. But this one, I'm adding it. So therefore, I'm going to get 2 to the 4x. And I'm also going to change the 8 into the same base, because this is one where we're going to solve it by using the equal basis property. So I'm trying to get both the bases the same. So I'm running 8 as a power of 2. Okay, multiple of 2 to the third power, I should say, for that. OK, then next, you're going to multiply the exponents. 4x times x is 4x squared. And then 4x times negative 1 is minus 4x. We're doing that because whenever you raise a power to another power, you need to multiply the exponents. That's one of the exponent rules. There's a power, another power, and multiply the exponents. All right, so now we have the bases are equal. So now we're going to set the exponents equal. That's how the equal basis property works. If the bases are equal, then we can set the exponents equal. Quadratic equations are always solved by subtracting it and setting it equal to zero. So I have 2x and I have 2x here. And 1 and 3 is the only combination we have for that. So then we're going to do uh, a 6 and a 2. So if I do a minus 6 and a plus 1 there, so I do minus 6 and a plus 2 will give you a minus 4. And that's, that's factored correctly. Now you're going to set both those equal to 0. 2x plus 1 equals 0. And if we do that, we'll get x equals negative 1 half. And then we have 2x minus 3 equals 0. Add 3 divided by 2, and you'll get 3 halves. So I get negative 1 half, and 3 halves would be the two answers that we get on this one. All right, so next one. OK, so we have another one that we're going to do that's a, a log question okay, for this. Um, so uh, the base graph, we're going to do y equals ln x right here. So starting with that, the base graph, it goes through ln, or, or 1, 0. And it's also going to go through this point right here, which is e comma 1. Whatever the base of the log is, that's what x value you're going to have here. So if that was like a log base 3, for instance, you'd have a 3 comma 1 there. But e is slightly less than, than 3. It's like 2.71. So at 2.71, it'll go through 1 right there. So these are the two key points on this. Next one I have is a y equals negative ln x. The negative is going to flip this over the x axis, which means everything's going to flip here. It's going to look like that. Then the last thing I have is my final graph is going to be taking this graph and moving it four places. This time we got to move it to the left. Because the plus, we're moving it to the left. This has the vertical asymptote at zero. That vertical asymptote is going to move four places to the left. And each of these dots is also going to move four places this way. Therefore, your final answer is going to look like this. Okay, it got shifted four places over and it got flipped. Uh, I do want to do uh, 5b also because that's most likely sim more similar to the graph that you'll have on the actual test. It's going to have a log of a base on there because this is harder to do with the graphing tool. 
And so I want to do one of these. This also has a different flip that we can talk about. Oh, by the way, this has a domain. It's going to ask you for domain here. We see that the graph only opens up to the right. So it's going to be from negative four to infinity. I'm sorry, negative four is not included. It's got to be a parenthesis. Okay, so negative four parenthesis because it never actually reaches that six vertical asymptote. All right, now this next one, we need to uh, switch the order on this. So if they give you a problem like that, the order needs to be switched so we can use the proper transformations. So the first thing we want to do is switch the order and make it negative x plus three, just switch the order around on that. Then we want to factor out a negative and we get x minus three. This is the actual one that we want to graph. Okay, we've got a negative on the inside. So this will be a flip over the y-axis this time. You always wanna make sure you get it into this format. You wanna have the x should come first and it's gotta be positive. So that's why I factor the negative out inside. You're gonna move the graph three places to the right because of what's inside the parentheses. You have to use the the factored version, once you take the negative out, that's what you're going to use to determine which direction it moves. This one we're going to do is log base two of X. So here it would be these key points. I have one zero always. This point here is two comma one. Remember that the, the base graphs here are, it's the base uh, B comma one. So two comma one we get for that. That's the one we're starting with here. I wanna do next log two of negative X because I have a negative inside the parentheses here. So I'll do the flip, do that one first. So that one, the graph is gonna flip over the y-axis this time. So both these points are gonna flip and be on this side. So that's what the negative x does. It flips everything over the y-axis. Then we have a minus three inside. So this is gonna be the, the final graph, log base two of negative x minus three. We'll do that here. The vertical asymptote is going to shift three places to the right because of the minus sign inside the parentheses. These points also move over as well, and they're going to end up here. So this is what the final graph is going to look like there. Okay, so that's the that's the final answer. The domain. On this one, because it opens up to the left, that's going to go down to negative infinity. And that's going to go up to three. So three again is not included because it's a vertical asymptote that I have. So negative infinity to three. I just want to do both of those just to show you the difference and the different the flips that you'll have. Okay, next one. Uh, for number six, it's going to be one where you have to use the properties of logs to expand uh, this out. So first thing we uh, probably want to do is change all this into power uh, rational powers. So I'm going to do that first before I separate anything. I'll just do this, this step right here, 4x minus 7 to the 1 half power. And I'll do that first. Okay, let's change everything all into powers. Next thing I'll do is change it from division into subtraction. That's the log rules that we're using there. X minus four and minus log four of two X minus, oops. I need to put all this together at once, so. I'm doing this here. 
and then I do minus log four of four times four x minus seven to the one half. Okay, so I'm, I start by doing the splitting it apart and doing the subtraction. Now, next thing I want to do is break all this up and turn that into a plus. Now, this one, I can also separate it, but I'm going to put these around these parentheses. So I'm doing this right here is also a form of multiplication inside because there's a four times four x minus seven. So I could separate those with a plus, but the most important thing is I need to make sure that I put parentheses around the entire thing because I'm subtracting both of these pieces. That's why I need, I, I need the parentheses around the whole thing or it needs to be a minus and a minus. Either way you want to write that. So this one here, I can now, the last step is I'm gonna bring the powers down in front. So I'll do that. This here inside, log four, four is a one. And I lost my power was that one half was supposed to be there. And this is plus one half log four of four X minus seven. And I can either leave my answer uh, is that, or again, we can distribute the minus sign and have a minus sign for both of these. So you need either a minus and a minus, or this has to all be around parentheses in order for it to be uh, correct there. Okay, so this, this line here would be your, your final answer. You're scanning this all out. And I just realized that my one fifth, so that's why I didn't look right here. And this is, sorry about that. This is a one fifth. Somehow my uh, one fifth power changed to a one fourth for some reason. So one fifth, one fifth, and this is one fifth here. Number seven is going to have these special instructions next to it that's going to say factor and simplify your answer for full credit it'll say something like that on on there so you want to make sure that this is uh reduced in here okay so that's that's the one the kind of questions it'll have which means that because it has that that means you're probably going to get something that can be factored and so that's the reason why uh that instructions are there so what we're going to do is we're going to actually put this back together as a single logarithm. So we're going to uh, first the plus here, we can just turn it into five times x minus six. It so doesn't matter the order. I'll put the five out front. Usually the numbers go out front in front of the algebra here, the variables. Then we have a minus. I'll just leave this the same for now. Then we're going to put this together as a single log. So minus will turn into a single log, uh, five times x minus six. And then on the bottom, two x cubed minus 12 x squared. All right, now for this, this is not simplified enough. So if you put this answer in, uh, it would mark you wrong in that case because you have to simplify it down uh, as much as possible. So we need to do another step on this, a factoring step. Top part's already factored, but the bottom one, we can pull out a 2x squared as a common factor. And we'll get x minus 6. And now we see here that the minus 6s will cancel out, and you get log base 2 of 5 over 2x squared. And that right there would be your uh, most simplified the final answer. Number eight, uh, you're solving for x. So it's going to be one that has three, three logs that are in it, something like this. OK, 
Okay, so in order to solve for something like this, we need to get all of it to be one log on the left hand side. So we're going to put these logs back together. We have log two of x minus six, x minus four. We still have this one here. Now we need to do one more step. There's a minus sign that's going to turn into a division. So we have that x goes in the bottom to the two over there. We want to change this from log form to exponential. Taking two raised to the power of two is going to equal everything else that you have here. So we're changing again from log form to exponential. The base raised to the power after the equal sign equals whatever you have left over. So we're gonna get a four over one, and then I'm gonna multiply this out. So X squared minus four minus six is a minus 10 X plus 24. All that's gonna be over four. Uh, next thing we'll do is cross multiply here. So we're going to multiply this X squared minus 10 X plus 24 equals 16. Going there, you could have also multiplied both sides by four if you wanted to. That's okay as well. Okay, so next thing uh, that we'll do, so we're going to continue this, uh, is subtract the 16 from both sides because you want to get a zero there. Okay, so 24. When you do that here, uh, you're going to get uh, 24 minus 16 on that side. So again, the reason why we are uh, subtracting this uh, is because uh, it needs to be equal to zero. And that's the only way that you can solve something like that is by subtracting. So that's the reason why anytime you see a quadratic, that's always what you should be doing. You should always be setting it equal to zero. Uh, to get the answer uh, there for that one. Okay, so so for that, that's that's uh, what we get there. Uh, okay. And oh, you know what? I lost. There's I don't know what happened. There's a should be an X in the bottom. My apologies here. Uh, so for this here, uh, that's not correct. There's an X in the bottom. I don't know what why that got changed to a four all of a sudden. Yeah, this is an X in the bottom. I'm not sure why that disappeared. Yeah, it's an X there. So four over one equals X squared minus 10 X plus 24 over X. That should be sort of four X you get on this side. So X squared minus 10 X plus 24, that should be equal to four X, not four. Okay, so four X there. Now, if we bring that over, we'll get now we have the right thing. We'll have minus 14x plus 24 equals zero right there. And then we're going to factor it. So factors of 24 that add up to 14 will be two and 12. Both of those are going to be negative. When you set those equal, you get x equals two and you get x equals 12. But remember, you have to check both of these by putting them into the original equation. If you have a log equation, Whatever you get, you have to put it back into the original law to make sure it fits the domain. So two minus six does not work because that's a negative number inside. So therefore, we have to eliminate two as the answer. Let's try 12. 12 minus six is positive. 12 minus four is positive, And this will be positive there. So the only answer on this problem is x equals 12. And that's going to be it. So again, uh, for these kind of problems, you're putting it together into a single log. You change it from log form to exponential, and then that allows us to solve. So most likely on, these, on this kind of problem, you will get a quadratic, so you do want to set it equal to zero and then factor it like we did here. Okay, so 12 is the answer.
Uh, number nine is one where you, you don't have to get a decimal answer on this. You can write your answer in terms of natural logs. A problem like this is one where you can't, you can't do that with equal basis property, unfortunately, because three and two you can't write as the same base. So instead, we're going to apply a natural log on both sides. Okay, so this, and we have this right here. Okay, so now we're going to bring the power down in front. And we'll do that for both. That's the whole reason for taking the natural log in the first place, is taking the natural log in the first place allows you to bring that down front. And then you can um, have this X, instead of being a power, now it's something that you can multiply out. So we're gonna multiply each of these. Remember that when you take ln3 times x, you don't get ln3x. You get x ln3 and then minus 5 ln3. On the other side, we'll do the same thing. We'll multiply both of this by lnx. So you get 4 lnx minus x lnx. Notice that these are staying on the outside. You're not allowed to multiply inside the ln. The goal on this problem is to bring all the x's on one side. So I have x ln 3 plus x ln uh, x ln x there, because again, when you bring it over, it turns into a uh, opposite sign. So it's plus. This other one that doesn't have a ln, I'm going to move that over to the other side. So I have 4 ln x plus 5 ln x right there. The whole purpose for getting these on one side is both of these are the X and the out front. You want to get both those terms on one side because that way you can factor out an X and that's going to allow you to solve for it. Okay, so for that, uh, and this should be, uh, why I'm making mistakes here, so apologize, these are LN twos, not LN X's on the side. So these are LN two here. So this is, I don't know why I put X there. These are all twos because that's the base of this one. So when you bring that down in front, that becomes LN2 that's there, like this one here. So then these are both LN2s, these are LN2. And so then when you factor out X down here, you're gonna get a, uh, for that one, this is a two also. And so you get LN3 plus LN2. And on this side is the same. So then we're just going to divide both sides by what's in front of the X. So here's what your final answer is going to be. And you don't have to get a decimal answer on this. It's okay to leave all this in terms of natural logs because that's what it'll have uh, on the test. It'll have your answer in terms of elements. So you don't need to get a decimal on it. In fact, it'll specifically ask you to write your answer in terms of natural logs. By the way, um, the question that often comes up here, this process that we did where you take Ellen on both sides, question comes up, could I have done that process for number, number four on this? Could I have done that? And the answer is you don't wanna do that process on this here. In fact, if you do that process on number four and have Ellen's in your answer, it's gonna be marked wrong. Okay, I'm not going to give you credit for it. You need to do the process like we're showing here on number four. On this test, for some reason, I have all kinds of weird answers on number four. I have, I have ones that have all kinds of LNs, crazy LNs that are in there, and I'm not sure why that, that's coming up because we did not show that in class. And so it might be some kind of computer system that's doing that for you. I don't want to see that on the test. So on number four, the ones, the work I'm showing you here, I need to see work that's similar to what that is because it's gonna say specifically use log properties in order to solve for X. So if you're putting LN on both sides, that's not using log properties. So something to keep in mind on that is uh, the test uh, will be checking for that and I'll be checking your work as well to make sure you have work that's similar to that. If it says solve by using properties, that's what you wanna use uh, for that. You shouldn't have a bunch of crazy LNs for your answer. Same with the 
this log equation one, this is another one I get all kinds of really weird answers and a bunch of LNs on it. So if you have any LNs in your answer, or if you do some crazy work like that, that's not similar to what we were doing in class by using log properties, it's going to be marked wrong as well. And I'm not going to give you credit for that one either. So you need to make sure you're following the process. That's why I'm, that's why I show you these sample exams uh, for a reason, because that's, this is the type of work that I'm expecting on on the test. So that's why you want to just make sure you kind of follow the process, same, same process and use the log properties because that's really what's being tested here. But this one, number nine, of course you're gonna have LNs in your answer and that's perfectly okay because that, that, that is the process is to take a natural log of both sides. So that is the one that you wanna look at. So of course, number nine is fine, that process is okay. But the other ones we looked at before, they have their own ways of solving those by using log properties. Uh, now, number 10 is we're getting into the half-life, it's a half-life problem. And for half-life, this is a formula that you want to have written down. So negative LN2 over half-life is going to give you the K value that you need in order to answer this particular question. So we put that in there, we have negative natural log of 2 half-life is given as 15 right here. So 15 hours, you don't want to use 24 because 24 is the name of the isotope, isotope name there. So 24 is not used at all in any calculations. We're going to use that negative LN2 over 15. When you do these problems in the test, uh, it's going to be looking for K value rounded to four places. So if it says use four places, you want to make sure you use that in your calculations, because if you don't, then you might get slightly off and you, it may mark you incorrect. Of course, I'm going to take a look at your work. If you if you use more decimal places and you have it on your on your scratch work like that, I'll probably give you credit for it. But just know that sometimes it's the decimals are a little bit sensitive on my open math. And that's why I sometimes mark things wrong. That's why I always double check your work, because if it's slight, if you had a you know, slightly off or you did a couple more decimal places and I marked you wrong, I, I just give you credit for it because you're still doing the correct process anyway. That's that's why I like to look over the work and make sure you get the points that you that you actually deserve on these. So now that we have this, the next thing to do is to use the, the formula. Now this is the decay formula. It's also the growth formula you're gonna use too, but this decay formula we're gonna use here. A sub zero E the KT. A sub zero is how much you're originally given, and that's seven. We have E, and then we have negative. Here is the K value. Now it also says 11 hours. So we'll put 11 hours there. So this is actually A sub 11 because, or A of 11, because the T is 11 there. We put in and that. And we just need to work out the exponent part. We'll do that part. For, oh, you know what? This part here is, I put the wrong the decimal in here for your K value. Uh, so the, this, I, this is actually the decimal that should have gone up here. So this is incorrect. So they, when you put that into your calculator, negative LN2 over LN15, you actually get instead, uh, Negative 0.0462. Okay, so that's that's the correct decimal one. That's negative 0.0462 is what you'll have up here. This decimal here is negative 0.5082. So I wrote the wrong number down there. My apologies. If you take negative 0.0462 times 11, that's the decimal you get here. Uh, negative 0.5082. Put that into your calculator. You put that in there, you're going to get about 4.21. It doesn't tell you what to round to here, but it will on the test. It'll tell you what to round your final answer to. It may be one decimal place, two decimal places. It might even just be the nearest whole number. Uh, it'll ask you to, to round to that. Number 11 will be a comparison problem, and you want to know Two different formulas on this because it's we have a compounded uh like it says semi-annually but then we have the word compounded continuously 
as well. So one thing that we will we'll do when we're going to do both of these separately, I'm going to do an A and a B and just do separate work for each one. For A, I'm given a principal of 1,000. My rate is 0.08. And my time is three years. And I have an N here as well, because it says semi-annually. Uh, in when we talked about this in that section, we talked about five seven, is where this is from. If you have uh, annually, it's n is one, semi annually, n is two, quarterly, n is four, monthly, n is 12, weekly is 52, and daily is 365. So, those are some things you want to make sure you know. That's how I knew that n was equal to two because of the word semi annually. Now, for a, you want to know this formula. This is the compound interest formula. P times one plus R over N to the NT. And now we're just going to plug in the information. We have a thousand. One plus 0.08. Notice that whenever we have a percentage, we always want to change it to a decimal. So you never want to put eight in there. It has to be a decimal when you put it into the formula. N is two. And we have two times three there on top. We're gonna work out the part in parentheses first. So 1.04, we get inside there and that's raised to the sixth power. And then finally, we just need to put that into the calculator and we'll get this 12.65 and 32 cents. That's for, for A. So now we're gonna do the the B, principal is still 1,000 here. The R is 0 0.079. We're moving the decimal place two places to the left. You do not want to round the rate. We don't want to round that to 0.08 because that's the not, not the correct interest rate. You got to use specifically 0 0.079 instead. And then we're given that time equals three years. Now this time we're told that this is being compounded continuously. So if you have continuously, that means you have to use a different formula. You have to use PE, the RT instead. Okay, so we're putting in a thousand E to the 0 0.079 and then times three. Start off by doing the exponent part will multiply that first and you'll get 0.237. If you multiply three times 0 0.079. This one, if you put it in your calculator, you need to use the, the E care key that's above the LN button on your calculator. That's the one you wanna use there. If you do that, you get 1267 and 44 cents, which means that option B is the results in a higher amount. So it says which, which re results in a higher amount, that would be choice B gives you slightly more when you do that. So even though we have a, a lower interest rate, it actually gave us a higher amount because it was compounded continuously. Number 12 uh, is one where you're going to have to find the, the growth formula. Now, on this question, it's going to actually be set up to where it'll give you the um, a multiple choice to select the correct growth formula, and then you'll use that to answer other questions. Okay, so in this case, there's only two questions on this. So let's first find the growth formula. The information that's provided, remember, we're using A of T equals A sub zero. E to the KT. This is the growth formula we want to use. In order to do this, we have to identify information that's been provided. A sub zero is two. That was originally uh, two Dunkin' Donuts stores. And it says uh, 2.25 years later, so T equals 2.25, there'll be 14 stores. So it means that A of T is equal to 
14. That's the information that's provided. Let's put this into the formula. So I have 14 equals 2 e to the k times 2.25. Okay, so I have that. Now I just need to solve for k. Divide both sides by 2. And we get 7 equals e to the 2.25k. Now, the next thing I need to do is take the natural log of both sides. And the reason why I'm doing that is because if you put the ln and e uh, together like that, it's going to cancel out. So I just get ln 7 equals e to the 2. Point, uh, e is gone, as I mentioned, 2.25k. The k value is then going to be ln 7 divided by 2.25. And if I put that into the calculator, it's going to be 0.8648. But that's not the answer. We want to write the actual growth formula. So you're going to have 7 is the original, or 2 is the original amount. So we'll put 2 here. That's e to the 0.86. 48t. And that is going to be your, your growth formula for this particular problem. It started out with two stores. So two goes in there, the a sub zero, and then we leave the t uh, just as is because what happens is then you're going to use that in the next question down here. So this, is, this formula what is an estimate of how many stores there are after uh, a certain number of years. So it says, how many stores will be estimated to be in Las Vegas after 3.5 years? It says round to the nearest whole number. Okay, so we want to put 3.5 in there. So 2e to the 0.8648 times 3.5. Okay, so now we just need to uh, work this out to get the answer. So uh, 0.8648 times 3.5 is going to be 3.0268. You multiply that, and then you'll put that into the calculator. And it says route, you, you're going to get, calculator is going to give you 4.0. Two, six with some more decimals, but you're rounding it to the nearest whole number. And so then you would just put 41 stores is approximately how many would be there at three, after three and a half years. Right. Now, obviously, this is a model that's you know slightly off. I don't think we have quite that many Dunkin' Donuts yet uh, that's, that's here. But anyway, for the model, it's that's what it's saying, OK? All right, so uh, that's that's 12a. So 12b is something similar you can look at where you have to set up an equation uh, for that one. Now, the last one that we're going to do today is number 13, and this is what we just talked about uh, yesterday in class. We we're this is from the 11.6 section. So because this is actually new um, and I have a little bit of time, I'm just going to go ahead and do both of these questions for you just so we get some extra practice because I know that the homework is going to be due uh, this week and so that way on Sunday and so that way we can go through both of these uh, for that. Okay so for this first one here uh, you can solve it by either using substitution or elimination. It actually doesn't matter which process you want to do. Okay now because this says um, y equals like that it probably would make sense to do this by substitution. So we're going to do x squared plus, and here we'll put x squared minus 1 equals 1. So I'm putting it into the first equation. I take out the y, replace it with x squared minus 1, and that's squared. So I have that. So next thing I would want to do is I need to expand this. Remember that you have to 
multiply this out. So it's x squared minus one and x squared minus one. So when you multiply that, you're gonna get x to the fourth power minus two x squared plus one. And that's what you're gonna get. So doing FOIL on that, we give you this. Now we wanna add the like terms together. X to the fourth uh, minus X squared. And then uh, plus one equals one like that. But then you can subtract one from both sides. So X to the fourth minus X squared is gonna equal zero. So now that we're at this point, we can factor. We can take out X squared from there and you get X squared minus one equals zero. You can even factor that one more time, x plus one, x minus one equals zero. If you set all those equal to zero, you get x equals zero, negative one and one. This is going to become the x values of your answer. So we have this. That's how you get three different answers on there. But then we have to find the corresponding uh, Y values for each one. Okay, so since we already have the Y that's solved, we can use that to get our Y values. So I have Y equals X squared minus one. If X equals zero, then I have zero Y equals zero squared minus one, which equals negative one. So zero negative one is the first answer. If I have X equals negative one, I have Y equals negative one squared minus one. So that's gonna give us a zero. So I have negative one comma zero, and then I have X equals one, Y equals one squared minus one, that's equal to zero as well. Okay, so these would be the three answers, zero, negative one, negative one, zero, and one, zero. Those are the three answers. Now I want to do this one by substitution because this one, since we're going to do this as well, this one I want to do by elimination. Elimination pretty much is the best way to solve this one because if you tried to do 13B with uh, uh, substitution, then if you solve for a Y, then you get plus or minus, and that's gonna make things more confusing. You have square roots and everything else. So you definitely don't wanna use uh, substitution on this, you wanna use elimination. So we can choose to eliminate the X squares or we can eliminate the Y squares. It's gonna be easier if we try to eliminate the Y squares because we would only need to multiply this by a positive two. Of course, if you wanna eliminate the X squares, that's not too bad either because you can multiply the whole row by a negative four, but if you wanna avoid multiplying by negative, you just need to work with the bottom equation. So that's what we'll do here. Okay, so I'll set this one up here. I'm gonna multiply the bottom equation by two. So everything, both sides, we wanna multiply by the two. So the top equation is going to remain the same. Bottom equation, we have eight X squared minus two Y squared equals zero. And we're adding this together when you're using elimination method. Add that together, we get a nine X squared. There's nothing that's zero. When you add that together, you get a nine. Divide both sides by nine and you get X squared equals one. And so then we're going to get X equals plus or minus one when you take the, the square root. Now, since I don't have an equation that's already solved already, what I'll do instead is I'm gonna use, I'll just use this, I, you can either use the top one or the bottom one. I'll use this one here since the numbers look a little bit smaller there. And we wanna do X is equal to one and we wanna do X is equal to negative one and plug this into here. So I have four times one squared, one squared, and then we have minus y squared equals zero. 
Uh, and so we get for this, four minus y squared equals zero. Uh, if you bring that over to the other side, then we get y squared equals four. So y equals plus or minus two. So this means that my points, I would write one and negative two, one and positive two. I'll get so again it's 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 plus or minus I get when I solve for that. Now I'll do the same thing here. I have four times negative one minus y squared equals zero. Uh, so this is squared. So I get I get exactly the same result here. Y equals plus or minus two for that as well. So I'll get a negative one, negative two negative one, two, and that would be my, so I do get four answers, four answers on this. So I got two with positive one and two with negative one, and I get that. So four answers I get on this particular one here. When you do this in the, uh, in my open math on that, uh, for this particular one, it's going to be a, uh, a multiple choice situation here. So you're going to have a multiple choice that you'll select your answers uh, based on that. So just select whatever one is correct. So that's the kind of question that you'll have here. Again, it'll be a, a multiple choice, a multiple choice type question you'll have. Okay, so yeah, let me go back up to 13. Here's 13A again uh, for you so you can see that. Uh, and so, yeah, this one again, like I said, you could have done, if you're going to do this one by substitution, that is in the answer key. And so uh, you are able to do that uh, either way on that uh, for this particular one. So you can do either one uh, for number 13. 13B, though, again, it's pretty much uh, elimination is the best way to do that one. But for 13A, if you were able to do it, you can check the answer key, but you'd have to move things around to make, make sure the X squares and the Ys are lined up uh, with, with each other. So both of them involve about the same amount of work. So either, either way, they're both about the same as far as the amount of work that you have to do. If a substitution, you will involve that fourth power, but this problem is not so bad because you can just factor out an X squared uh, and get the answer that way. Uh, with it, so it's not too bad uh, if you wanted to go about it that way. So you do have a choice on which one to do that. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, I went through all the most of the all the version A's. I did a couple of the B's as well. Uh, so uh, that should be pretty much be it for the review. So uh, uh, the, the actual test again is going to be on on Monday. Uh, and we'll have similar questions as what you see uh, on this. So there will be 13 questions. Uh, it'll be in my open math. Again, make sure you remember to scan a copy of your written work and send it to me within uh, 30 minutes of completing that in my open math. And I'll be going through and checking all of your work uh, on that one. And then you'll be getting an email from me as usual uh with what score you got on the test and what your new adjusted score is after i've looked through your your written work so just make sure you show uh all the steps here and just make sure the steps are you know if it says something like use log log properties then make sure you use log properties when you show the work on that so uh, uh any questions before we end the meeting All right, well, we'll go ahead and end this meeting. If you have any questions, again, please email me over the weekend. I'll be checking emails there. Uh, and remember, there's no, no live lecture on Monday. Uh, enjoy your weekend uh, and see all you guys next week for the review for the final.